Kurtzgesat. I think I just looked up the pronunciation. I already forgot. <laughs> if you eat meat, you should know this. And I'll just say right off the bat, overall, I really, really like this video. For one thing, I like that they say torture over and over again. In fact, they call factory farming torture camps. Most animals we eat live in truly horrible conditions. They don't shy away from how truly cruel the conditions are for these animals. They talk about or they estimate how much it would cost to improve these animals' lives, specifically talking about Europe. The main alternative to cages are barn systems. Hens are still kept indoors, but have twice as much space and roam freely. Barns are prisons. Still not amazing, but so much better. In the EU, barns increase the consumer price by about two cents per egg. The point being that yes, making these animals' lives better would cost more, but it would only cost more because of how dirt cheap meat is today. And the reason meat is so dirt cheap is because we treat them so terribly, namely by giving them so little room to move. They mention labels and labels supposedly telling you how nice this meat is, how, you know, free range, cage free, whatever. And they talk about how that can be misleading, how a lot of terms are not regulated. Unfortunately, the label situation in many countries is extremely confusing, often on purpose. They also specifically bring up biodynamic and non-GMO, and I think they actually say, like, stupid. Non-GMO is stupid. Organic brands often include, for a lack of a better word, stupid measures, like forbidding GMO feed. And finally, they talk about mussels, oysters. Calling mussels dumb is giving them too much credit. With no central nervous system and probably no thoughts or pain, they're basically moss. Really, everyone should eat more mussels. So yeah, overall, I highly recommend it. It's a pretty short watch, like most of their videos, but it gets all the most, most of the points across. And that's my main issue, is that they don't talk about climate change, which is kind of crazy because we know by improving these animals' lives, again, mainly by giving them more room, unfortunately means more GHG emissions. Giving these animals more room to roam around means that you just need a lot more space overall if you want to continue to rear the same number of animals. World Resources Institute compared conventional to alternative animal systems, so like free range. 45 studies from North America and Europe between 2000 and 2022 and found that the alternative systems like free range led to an increase in environmental impact 75% of the time. This is largely due to the way the animals are raised. For example, in grass-finished, grass-fed beef systems, cattle grow at a slower pace and emit more methane during their lives than in conventional grain-fed systems, where they are fattened in the final months of their lives in feedlots. This leads to higher agricultural GHG emissions per gram of protein produced relative to conventional systems. When looking at total carbon costs, this combines emissions on the farm and carbon opportunity costs. This is carbon losses from plants and soils when forests are turned into farms, agriculture. Alternative meat and dairy production systems like grass-fed, organic, and free-range had higher overall climate impacts per gram of protein than conventional systems in more than 90% of cases. This is because the climate impacts of the higher land use requirements ultimately outweighed these systems' lower on-farm emissions. You can see that represented here. Total carbon costs, yellow is alternative, conventional is blue. And this includes eggs too. Most of the alternative farms were worse. So if someone starts buying only pasture-raised meat without reducing their overall meat consumption, their environmental impact will increase. Ongoing agricultural land expansion conflicts with urgent goals to end deforestation and restore ecosystems, which will be necessary to reach global climate goals and hold the world to 1.5 or 2 degrees Celsius of warming. Now, hopefully people choosing pasture raised would also reduce their meat consumption. So maybe in the end, the uh, net could be beneficial, right? There could be a net reduction in environmental impact. And this is what they recommend in the video. If you can't afford this, maybe eat a bit less meat. I doubt this would happen because animal products, especially eggs, are very price inelastic, meaning that price increases don't affect demand very much. People will pay a lot for meat and milk and eggs. We see this in New Zealand right now. The battery cage ban went into effect in 2023 and egg prices went up several dollars as a result, and yet demand seems unaffected. 
Now, if environmental damage were included in the cost, that might be a different story. The New York Times actually has a really cool article and like infographic on this. While the cost of chickpeas and tofu would increase by 74 and 21 cents per pound respectively. Chicken would cost an extra $1.83, cheese $3.76, and beef $22.02. Bringing the cost of a pound of beef from $5.34 to $27.36. And that's for factory farmed animals. So again, pasture raised animals would go up even more. And what would this environmental cost go to exactly? What would this extra $22 go to? Would it even be beneficial? Because the evidence we have so far on carbon offsetting is not super positive. You can argue that, well, the video is solely focused on animal welfare. They're not talking about climate change. The problem is they are recommending real change, right? They are encouraging their viewers to take action and actions do not happen in a vacuum. If people really want to switch to animal friendly farming, there is a downside to that and it's a pretty big one. You don't have to go vegetarian or vegan. No, Kurt, Kurtz, 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 shit. They are right about that. But you really do need to eat fewer animal products, whether they originate in torture camps or not. Another issue I have is during the discussion of labels being misleading, they still encourage people to choose foods with these labels. And I think even say that there's like a high chance of these foods being torture free. Grudgingly, if you can afford it and want at least a high chance of torture free meat, go for the label. If you can afford it, buy organic. If you can afford it and have time, research local farms and get your meat from a place you've seen yourself. The problem is it's not just an issue of labels being misleading. Even if these labels do have legal meaning, are they actually being enforced? Are companies actually following the rules? Cage-free, free-range, pasture-raised, these all have legal meaning here in the United States. And yet over and over and over again, PETA and other animal rights organizations do investigations at these supposed free-range farms and find that no, they are not following the rules. These companies will skirt the rules so they can make more money. It's, it's pretty simple. I personally would not put my trust into any company that makes its money off of commodifying sentient beings. Once you turn sentient beings into a product, abuse is pretty much inevitable. There are other concerns too that go away when buying more you know, animal friendly meat. You have zoonotic disease risk, you have antibiotic resistance, subsidies. Again, their video is focused on the EU, but the EU has basically the same problem we have here. Their agricultural subsidies mostly go to animal products. It's like 82% if you include animal feed, but those are an issue for factory farming as well. They're not getting worse like with climate change, environmental impact. That recent Modern MBA video talked specifically about dairy and how dairy just does not make money. <laughs> it exists because of subsidies and grocery stores use milk as a loss leader. It's just to get people in the store because you have to buy it so frequently. Ideally, someone goes in to buy milk and they end up buying a whole bunch of other stuff too. So yeah, overall, I like the video. Environmental impact is so important though. It really needs to be mentioned. You just really can't get away from we need to reduce our animal product consumption for so many reasons. And again, they do recommend that, but it's more like if these foods are too expensive for you, well, you can eat less meat. But really, we all need to reduce our animal product consumption, whether you care about animal welfare or not. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much to the patron who recommended this video to me. I did not see it. I totally missed it. So thank you. And speaking of patrons, thank you so much to my patrons at patreon.com slash a natural vegan, as well as my members here on YouTube for supporting the channel, right? I would not be here without you guys. Thank you so much. I do post exclusive videos for tier two members and patrons. I do a vlog during the first half of the month. And then the second half, I do a controversial topic. I think I know what I'm going to talk about for this month. It's just something that's been irking me for so long. <laughs> that's basically what I use these videos for. It's, it's a great outlet for me instead of posting controversial stuff publicly like I used to do and then just getting in trouble. I can do it on Patreon and I'm a lot less likely to get in trouble. <laughs> I don't think I'd get in trouble for this next one though. But uh, anyway, thank you so much. 
please do like, subscribe, all that stuff, and new video very soon.